Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Practically's NEAT class. So today we are going to discuss a little bit about Kingdom Animalia. In the previous classes, we have uh, discussed about the basis of classification, we have discussed about taxonomy, we have discussed about uh, uh, kingdom plantae, the different kinds of plants, bryophytes, algae, gymnosperms, angiosperms. But today, the, this class is totally dedicated to the kingdom Animalia. Okay. So, uh, now a uh, little bit I'll tell. Uh, today, we are going to basically discuss what makes an animal an animal. And we are going to discuss a little bit about the non chordates part. Okay. The lower animals and in the next class we will be discussing about the higher level of animals okay so before we start i will tell a little bit about practically so we are practically and uh, practically basically is a learning app which goes for the class 6 to class 12 you can find a lot of videos over there you can opt for courses as well okay and uh, there are there's a lot of interesting things happening uh, over there okay and it's not just studies you can find a lot of coding classes and everything simulations and everything it's a very interesting app you should just check it out okay so you can also follow us on facebook and on instagram and on uh, youtube okay you can follow our classes on youtube as well okay we have a lot of classes going on and apart from that if you have experienced our app okay you can leave your ratings from your iphones and your android phones okay so today we are going to talk a little bit about the animal species and before that I want to say that if you have any doubts you can leave it on the chat box and uh, I can answer it live as well so it will be easier for us to interact and it will be easier for us to talk to each other and you can clear your doubts as well okay so leave your comments on the chat box okay so we are talking about the animal kingdom and the thing is uh, what we can say is that the animal kingdom is about animal kingdom is like we have seen around somewhere around 9 to 10 million species of animals have inhabited the earth okay so over this over so many years thousands and thousands of years about 9 to 10 million species of although we are not we have not identified all the species okay we have not identified all the species but there are around 9 to 10 million species which inhabit in the earth. Okay. So, what we have done, we have actually identified around 800,000 or 8 lakh, if we say in Indian. Okay. So, we have identified only so much, only this percent of species only have been identified, rest are still unidentified. Okay. And biologists rec recognize about 36 separate phyla. Okay. Phylum, as you know, kingdom phylum. Okay. So, biologists, they talk about only 36 separate phylas for the animal kingdom. So, that is very important. You should definitely, definitely remember this point. Okay. So, now what are the characteristics? What makes an animal an animal? Okay. So, the first thing is multicellular, of course. Okay. Single cell will always be the uh, family or in the class of monera okay bacterial cells are only you uh, unicellular multicellular will always be animals will always be multicellular will have many many cells okay eukaryotic with no cell walls plants have cell walls okay we've read about this in the last class plants are the cre creatures or the char plants characteristics have cell walls animals have do not have cell walls okay they directly have what they directly have cell membranes 
okay so eukaryotic of course eukaryotic as in developed cell okay with no cell walls okay heterotrophs of course because we are consumers we do not make food okay so we are animals we do not make our own food none of the animals make their own food okay have a nervous system to respond to the environment okay nervous system this is not present in any other living being okay so not it is this is not present in any other living being okay locomotion relates to ability to obtain food so these are locomotive as well this is a very important this nervous system point and locomotion point animals move okay for the we don't make our own food right so we have to move okay most animals develop from zygote and become single layer of cells a uh, fluid space fluid filled space forming a hollow ball of cells called a gastrula gastrula is basically what we call embryo okay so we have the whole thing this even some of the developed plants like uh, angiosperms also have they have a zygote growing okay there is the female gamete and the male gamete and they have a zygote and then there is the, the formation of embryo but what they don't have this gastrula thing and the fluid uh, fluid space and the single layer of cells everything this this it is not this developed this development is not seen in other organisms this development of gastrula and everything is only seen in animals okay and most animals ingest their food and digest it in some kind of internal cavity okay that whole digestive system the alimentary canal okay that is only seen in animals and not any other organisms alimentary canal okay this is only seen in animals okay so the first thing one of the most important things which comes in mind when we talk about animals is the animal reproduction although plant reproduction has a lot of female gametes and male gametes and the formation of embryo and the formation of uh, uh, pollination sac and everything that is also developed but it is not as developed as as it is seen in the animals okay so mostly animals reproduce sexually okay by the means of haploid cells eggs and sperms these are all haploid in nature one pair of chromosomes okay eggs and sperms are haploid when they come together when they merge they become diploid okay so most animals are diploid okay when eggs and sperms come together they become diploid okay meaning cells at all contain two copies of genetic material one belonging to the father and one belonging to the mother okay the egg will give one chromosome and the sperm will give the other pair and together they'll become 2n so most of the animals are 2n okay every multicellular organism begins life as single cell called zygote which is a given okay zygote is seen in plants as well as animals zygote divides into many times form a mass of uh, cells these mass of cells get arranged into two to three layers these are germinal layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm okay this is how it is done okay this zygote is there in animal plants but what this arrangement of cells one after the other ectoderm forming the skin 
mesoderm forming the organs, endoderm forming the internal organs and everything, this, this level of specification okay, is not seen in any other organism apart from animals. Even in the lower animals, okay, there is a form of ectoderm and endoderm, not mesoderm, mesoderm is seen in higher animals, we will be talking about this after this. Okay, but no plant has the whole possibility of growing ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, no, nothing happens. It's simple there, okay, it's just egg sperm together forming a seed, seed to plant, that's all. There is no level of cell organization, okay, okay. So, as I was talking, diploblastic animal, two layers, outer ectoderm and inner endoderm. So, the lower organisms have only ectoderm and endoderm. Okay. So, ectoderm forms the outer area, the uh, exoskeleton and the skin, etc. And the endoderm forms the inner organs. Okay. So, lower organisms only like nidaria, okay, they only have ectoderm and endoderm. And the higher animals have ecto meso and endo okay which gives the rise to a whole body whole system this is seen only in higher animals phylum platyhelminthes onwards from platyhelminthes to arthropods arthropods to mollusca mollusca to uh, the chordatas okay chordatas as in the reptiles the apes or the birds amphibians, the mammals, everyone has the ecto, endo, meso and the lower ones have ecto and endo because they only have the outer and the inner, no high uh, organ system and all, they don't have that, nidaria and all, the sponges and everything, they don't have so much higher levels of organization that is only seen in the higher animals, okay. So, I was talking about gastrula, this is how the whole thing looks, gastrula is an embryo Okay, at the stage following the blastula, ectoderm, okay, see, so this is how the whole thing looks. This is the ectoderm, this is the outer part, okay, mesoderm you can see, this is the triblast, okay, mesoderm is the middle one and endoderm is the inside one. So, in lower animals, you can see just this and this, okay, these are lower animals and in the higher animals you can see ecto, meso, endo. So, all three you can see. Okay, this is how the whole thing looks. See, as you can see the ectoderm develops into skin and nervous tissue. Endoderm forms the digestive tract and other things, digestive tract, elementary canal, etc. etc. Mesoderm forms the muscles, the reproductive organs, the higher animals have it. It is not seen in the lower sponges and all. You cannot see this. This is not available for lower animals. Okay, this can be only seen in the higher animals. Okay, so now this, the whole reproduction part is completed. Now sizes. We all know there are different, different sizes. Okay, before that, before going into the whole se section, I'd like to talk that if you have any doubts, okay, if you have any other doubts, please come in the chat box and ask. Okay, I'd be very happy to answer them. Okay, so reproductive part of animals, I have completed. Now, we'll talk about the sizes, animal size. You can see in this whole picture, okay, how the size is, okay, some size. Blue whale is around 82 feet, okay, whereas a man will be hardly, even if the tallest of the tallest of man will also be around 6 feet to 6.5 feet on an average, I am saying the tallest man on an average will be 6 feet to 6.5 feet, it is not more than that possible, 
okay but see how blue whale is all animals i'm not saying they are different all are animals a blue whale is also an animal a human being is also an animal but see the difference of sizes it can be 6 feet to 6.5 feet for man and for blue whale it is 82 feet okay whereas see an emperor penguin is hardly 4 feet the tallest of the penguins are 4 feet whereas macaws and all there will be 3.3 feet and uh, this thing see this is a dragon fly and this is just 7.4 inches as much that's all okay so animals differ in sizes okay different animals different animals have different sizes okay it can range from uh, 6 inches to 82 feet okay anything is possible any different kind of animal can have different different kind of sizes okay so next animal cells very important because animal cells is one of the most complicated cells in organisms okay they have a lot of organelles okay there is rer rough endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies vesicles centrioles there's plasma membrane there is mitochondria there is mito microtubules microfilaments everything is there okay they have a lot of organelles okay organelles all the organelles are present here apart from that the nucleus is well developed okay with the nuclear membrane and nucleolemma and everything it is properly developed and the organelles are highly developed so the animals are one of the most complicated cells in the organisms okay so next animal bodies okay we have talked about the ectoderm mesoderm endoderm and everything they have cells they have cellular organization when cells come together okay when cells are organized that way it becomes tissues okay we know a lot of tissues we know adipose tissue adipose tissue etc that are known is present in our body again tissues when a lot of tissues come together they form organs okay they form organs now when organs again come together they form an organ system you can see here okay cell cell all cells coming together forms a tissue tissue coming together forms an organ organs come forming together becomes an organ system okay so i'll just write it here so it becomes very easy cells come together form tissues okay when they come together again they form organs and after that system and this makes the whole organism okay so i'm saying again and again if you have any doubt please ask me in the chat box okay okay so organ system now we have learned that cells tissues tissues to organs organs to organ system now different kinds of uh, animals have different kind of there are basically two kinds of organ system okay one is the open circulatory system and one is the closed circulatory system okay so what is open circulatory system open circulatory system is when blood we have a heart okay we all know that we have a heart okay now when heart when it's open circulatory system heart is pumping blood and the blood just directly goes into the body okay there are no arteries veins vessels lymph lymph vessels and all there is nothing that complicated okay it's just pumping the heart is taking the blood it is pumping it out inside the body okay just bathes the organs organs get blood directly that is the open circulatory system see here you can see 
okay there's the heart you can see the heart okay heart directly goes into the different kind of organs okay this is seen basically it is seen in arthropods you can see okay so this is the open circulatory system now there are closed circulatory system which we have we have a closed circulatory system what happens in the closed circulatory system the heart does the all the pumping of the blood but after that what happens the it reaches it goes from the arteries to the veins to the capillaries and everything okay it is not direct it is a bit indirect in nature okay it does not go and directly flush the organs no okay it just reaches from one section to the other section from the veins to the arteries to the lymph vessels etc it goes like that there are levels of organization okay so that is why this is known as the closed circulatory system okay this is seen in humans also humans have it we have it so open circulatory system is basically simple in nature okay it's just blood blood pumped into the organ okay this is complicated in nature okay so that is the organ system next symmetry one of the most important factors in a body is the symmetry now there are three kinds of symmetry we find in the animals one is the asymmetrical animals symmetry means like how the similarity in the shape okay like how okay we are bilaterally symmetrical how suppose we cut ourselves into half okay from the head to our whole body we cut it into half okay you take okay the picture is very uh, horrifying but try and imagine okay so you cut into half okay each half will have similar kind of structure okay one half will have one eye half of the nose half of the lips one hand one leg okay on the other hand same thing one eye one, half of a nose half of a lip one hand one leg so we are bilaterally symmetrical okay some are asymmetrical if you cut it into a half or any other structure there is no nothing like you cannot do it into a half structure you cannot put it in structure it will be very you cannot cut it into a half and even if you cut it into a half it will be uneven in nature this unevenness is known as asymmetrical un even body okay so asymmetric animals such as sponges snails they are they have an uneven body okay radially symmetrical it is like radially when we talk about radially it is like a circle kind of okay it's not half it's a circular kind of a body okay so circularly symmetrical it will be it will can cut into two similar halves in many planes since it's circular it can be cut from many planes okay and all cuts pass through the center since it's circle circled everything see i'll tell you if it's suppose this is a circle although this is a very wrong circle it's not a proper circle any way we cut it to form an uneven okay this center will be there okay everything will pass through the center so that is when this radial radially symmetric okay you see this is a hydra okay this is the circle when they have passed it cut it through different radials it cro crosses the cir circle and each of the part each of the quarter it's divided into four parts each of the quarter is similar okay so this is even and circular okay next bilaterally symmetric this is what i was talking about bilaterally symmetric 
this is even in nature okay so seen in humans also okay one will two equal halves we'll cut ourselves one single median plane this is not by radially is a lot of planes okay but here this one single median plane and we have all equal one hand one leg one eye one hand one leg one eye like that this is the most seen in mostly higher animals okay so this is seen in mostly higher animals again i'm saying if you have any doubts please ask okay now next is the body cavity or silom now what is silom body cavity is the space between the body wall and the elementary canal which produced by splitting of mesoderm during embryonic development this body cavity is basically suppose this is our body and this is our elementary canal this space you see this is the cavity okay it can be filled by mm, blood it can be filled by something else it can be filled by uh, organs etc so this cavity you see this is known as the body cavity this space you see you can see the body cavity or silom okay so a silomates animals which do not have any body cavity there are animals lower animals which do not have any body cavity space between body and elementary canal is filled with parenchyma parenchyma is a kind of cells that is the example is platyhelminthes pseudocilomates where it's a false body cavity okay and they have mesodermal cells okay it is false in nature false body cavity okay and it's also known as pseudocell okay the example is acelmins okay and then there is silomates where they have true body cavity okay there's a whole thing there's a whole body cavity and they have organs okay and they have blood and they have veins arteries everything that is in the higher animals that is known as silomates we are all silomates okay this is true cavity now one of the thing which comes in actually neat is some animals like cockroach siloma is filled with blood only blood okay because they have an open system no they only have blood so this is that is why since they have blood it is known as hemocell this is important for neat okay so if you have any question please let me know now okay this is the drawing which you can acylomate as you can see see there is the digestive tract over here and the outer covering okay there is nothing over here okay no other things no tissue layers no nothing okay so this is the acylomate here on the other hand you can see pseudocylomate this is false cavity this you can see is false cavity this it's just false there's nothing special it's just mesoderm muscle layer from mesoderm etc okay and the digestive tract okay so it is false in nature and finally in the higher animals okay you can see body covering there's the body covering there's the digestive tract and apart from that there is tissue layer okay suspending internal organs okay there is muscly some uh we have muscles okay we have muscles we don't have in the cavity and the organs are divided by muscles and fat and everything okay muscles is seen in human and yeah when the silomate okay okay next body segmentation this is seen in lower animals mostly where body can be segmented okay and this phenomenon is known as metamerism okay this is important 
for meat okay so it is called as metamerism series of segments when you take suppose you take a earthworm kind of a thing in your hand okay you can see there are segments okay there are divisions in the body okay so that kind of segmentation is known as metamerism everything is similar okay but there are segments you can break it up also if you if you're feeling very scared of it you don't shouldn't do that don't hurt animals okay animals also have lives okay but if you can cut it if you're going for a scientific experiment or something cut it you can see segments you can break it into segments okay so see earthworm as you can see there are segments here in the picture you can see there are segments okay so these are known as animals are known as metamerically segmented animals just earthworms okay body support this is one of the last things okay the internal or external framework which provides support to the body is known as skeleton we all have skeleton we have a skull we have hand bones and everything those kind of support is only seen in the animals okay lower animals have only exoskeleton for protection cockroach only has exoskeleton whereas higher developed animals have exoskeleton and endoskeleton for example fish cobra parrot man they have both they have both exo and endo skeleton okay next now we'll go into the part of where we discuss a lot of different different kinds of animals okay so first today we are going to discuss about the non chordatas some examples we'll see we'll see porifera we'll see nidaria okay we'll see platyhelminthes annelida arthropoda mollusca and everything we'll see today we'll be discussing mostly about the invertebrates okay or non chordata now what are non chordata basically very very easy what when you ask when somebody asks what are non chordates or what are non chordatas basically the animals which do not have a backbone okay there is no backbone or spinal cord okay there are no spinal cords or backbones or anything those animals are known as non chordates and 95% of all animals are in this group 95% so only 5% of all animals are vertebrates okay and 95% of them are invertebrates today we are going to talk a little bit about the invertebrates okay first we'll start with the phylum porifera so have you gone has anybody if anybody is here have you seen like if you go through a uh, national geographic channel or discovery channel you can see a lot of in the tv you can see a lot of places where they'll be going deep ocean diving or deep sea diving okay and there you can see a lot of structures like this okay okay although they don't look like they'll be animals but these structures okay sponges and everything okay these are the kind of a lower animals in the phylum porifera okay so what they are the most simplest animals okay organisms may be solitary they may stand alone or colonial or sedentary okay maybe just there not moving not not doing nothing colonial maybe they are together they are living together sponges or they might be like solitary also mostly marine some are fresh water as i said you can see people going under water diving and finding a lot of sponges and all that is why because they are marine or fresh water they are all aquatic in nature
okay so vase shaped or cylindrical body okay they have a cylindrical body it basically looks like this okay body shows cell aggregate plan no tissues or organs the lowest form of animals okay they don't have any kind of uh, organs or any kind of high thigh muscles etc nothing it's just no tissues also okay it's just there some cells that's all okay there are ostia okay small pores through which the water enters the body and osculum is opening through which the water exits so ostia second ostia for entering and osculum for exit okay body enters water enters and water comes out and the body is called body cavity is called spongosil okay, it's not it's kind of acylomate it's known as spongosil choanocytes help in digestion okay this might come in exams okay so they help in digestion exoskeleton the outer part of the sponge is made up of silica caco or protein sponging fibers this is outer covering okay the outer covering is protein spongin or silica or calcium carbonate porifera feeds on detritus material detritus means dead or decaying okay present in the water they have asexual reproduction by budding or sexual reproduction by gametes okay so they have budding like if they have a structure like this will have a bud like this and this bud will grow and finally they will form a whole another sponge okay this is how they reproduce okay so that's all now phylum nidaria have you seen jellyfish okay so jellyfish they are very pretty but they are actually stingy also they sting a lot if you hold it in your hands or if you ever step on it okay jellyfish is a kind of nidaria okay they are mostly solitary okay they live alone only or they can live together in a community sedentary or free living animals they might be standing in one place standing in one place some stand in one place and some some are free living they move free living ones move okay mostly marine but you can be found in fresh water yeah these are also aquatic in nature body is radially symmetrical as i said you consider it a circle and you put a lot of planes on it you pass through a center okay and they have a special feature called the nidocytes okay special cells called nidocytes which contain stinging structures called nematocysts in this picture you can see these things these 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 structures okay these are the nematocysts now what happens okay they have they are tentacly in nature okay what happens this tentacles has a kind of trigger this needle kind of structure needle structured what they do they have that nematocyst see here nematocyst okay in the nematocyst they have that nidocytes and they discharge it it's a thread like structure they discharge it and hold the prey together just they go and capture it 
okay with the help of the nematocyst okay and this needle thing has a toxin okay it's kind of a poison which they needle it into the prey and the prey becomes static okay it's poisonous so the prey stands there and then they can feed on it this hole is for the for nutrition they use to collect food okay in the body's cavity is called colentron helps in digestion and circulation and two types there are two types polyp and medusa why two types i'll tell you the polyps are the ones which are sedentary okay polyps are the ones here is a polyp these do not move they are stuck in one place do not move okay and the medusas are the one which are umbrella shaped the jellyfish is a medusa okay have you heard of medusa medusa was a goddess okay and she had hair and which had snakes she had snakes in her hair okay and that kind of thing is found in jellyfish we have on the head they have tentacles that is why they are called medusas okay and the mouth is surrounded as i said mouth is surrounded by testic tentacles and which help in the prey capturing okay they do not have a very high fi nervous system is very poor and they have a sexual reproduction budding and they have sexual reproduction some have asexual and some have sexual now sea anemone this is a sea anemone okay and jellyfish jellyfish as i said is medusa kind and this is a sea anemone sea anemone is a kind of polyp and this is jellyfish okay so polyps and men. okay done with that now we'll come to tenophora tenophora is basically aquatic in nature have you seen bioluminescence when you go into the beach okay and you see a kind of luminescence night time if you go and you see a lot of blue kind of shiny materials okay that is seen when there is tenophoras or tenoplana or fluorobrachia that kind of organisms are there they form they capture the light and they give out bioluminescence because of the pigment they have in their body okay that is seen because of the this kind of animals called as tenophora okay they are aquatic okay and they have radially symmetrical body comb jellies animals are called comb jellies they'll be jelly kind if you touch them it will be kind of slippery okay so they are comb jellies it's spherical body they exhibit as i said they exhibit bioluminescence and sexual reproduction with external fertilization external like the males will leave the sperms and the female will leave the eggs and the the fertilization will happen outside the body outside the body okay the fertilization happens outside the body this happens in the tenophora next platyhelminthes i am actually running in the course because these are all very small 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 part next when we will be talking about the vertebrates and the animal different kind of animals the mammals the everything else we'll be talking about we'll be talking a bit more and apart from that we have the uh, after this we'll be going into the animals and the different kind of system the excretory system etc when we move more into the syllabus we'll be talking more about the animals same with the plants as well we'll be knowing about the anatomy and the morphology same with animals we'll be learning about the anatomy and the morphology okay 
Now this is just an introduction into the animal and the plant life. Anyway, so moving platyhelminthes, this is the first kind of, after so long, this is the first kind of animals which are true animals. They are considered as true animals. Okay, why? Because they have they are they have proper uh, systems and they are not they are silomates and everything they have the ectoderm endoderm mesoderm everything that is why they are considered as true animals okay so most are parasites okay and few few are free living some live out and mostly are parasites you can find some in the bodies of animals or other animals as well okay bodies leaf like or ribbon like it's unsegmented, it cannot be segmented, dorsoventrally flattened, it is flattened structure, okay, and covered by something called cuticle. Their outside covering is called cuticle. Parasitic forms show suckers or hooks. This thing you can see here in the liver fluke, they hold. Since they are parasite, what they'll do, suppose this is an organism, they'll hold, they have in their mouth, they have hook kind of structure. And they'll just hold it. Okay, so that for that they have suckers or hooks. Okay, see here. Here you can see teeth like structure. How it will be? I'll show you. Okay, this is the opening, it will be like this. The structure of the mouth will be like this okay and this this needly kind of structure you can see they'll just hold on to the host body okay they'll just hold on to the host body and suck or take the nutrition out of them in parasitic form digestive system is absent it present it has only one opening okay there's just one opening Excretory system is made up of flame cells. Okay, so Platyhelminthes has something called flame cells. This is important for meat. Okay, next. The nervous system is a form of nerve rings or nerve cords. These have, since I said this is a true kind of uh animal okay they have nervous proper nervous system with nerve rings or nerve cords reproduction reproductive system is well developed animals are mostly hermaphrodite they are bisexual they have both the female parts and male parts present in one body so that is why they are called as hermaphrodites okay great power of regeneration okay they can just regenerate from one body to another there is regeneration suppose they miss a little bit part of their body they can regenerate it okay locomotory structures they move sense organs are not present there are no sense organs okay examples such as form and liver fluke okay see this is the body they have the ovary also this is the female part and they have the testis and the penis also so this is the male part they have both okay next phylum acelminthus okay acelminthus okay they are round worms okay this kind of uh, parasites are actually found in the human body as well okay they are basically parasitic in nature body is long and cylindrical okay bilaterally symmetrical if you cut it in half okay you'll find two parts body uh, which are pseudo silomate they have false cells in cavity they don't have muscles and all, they're not that high. Okay. These animals show T 
tube within a tube. One tube, when you see it under a microscope, you can see tubes in a body. Okay, the whole system, the nervous system, the uh, reproductive system are in tube ways. Okay, that is how it looks. Excretion takes place by in something called protonephridia. This is their excretory system. Okay. Now this is how it looks. They have a male part. They are all they are not bisexual, they are unisexuals. Okay, there is a proper male and female kind of ashelmenthes. Okay, so this is the male. As you can see, male are smaller. Okay, male ascaris have curved posterior. See, you can see smaller in nature and they are curved in nature. You can see the testis and the sperm duct. And this is the, see, everything is tube based. You can see this is all tube based. Okay, and this is the female. This is a bit longer. Okay, they have the uterus and the vulva. Okay, and the anus, intestines, everything is there. Okay, all of them have the excretory system is the protonephridia, intestines, pharynx, nerve ring. Okay, so this is the female animal, this is the male animal. Male animal is smaller than the female animal. This is how it looks and examples of them are Ascaris, Usheraria and Dracunculus. Okay, next, Anilida. Anilida is a type of earthworms, whatever is seen, okay, that comes under the Anilida. They are ringworms also because they have segmented body. When you pick it up, you see there are segmented bodies, okay. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, please do ask. Anybody is here? Okay, so they are all free living and they are all terrestrial. These are not aquatic anymore. They are terrestrial in nature. They live on the soil. Some are burrowing inside the soil. They are bilaterally symmetrical. You cut into a half and you can see. And they are, they are first silomates. Okay, they have proper tissues and everything developed tissues and all. The first silomates. Okay, the body is soft. Elongated and cylindrical, metamerically segmented. As I said, metamerically, it is all segmented. If you cut it into a half, it is all bilaterally symmetrical, and then you can cut it in segments as well. Okay, circulatory system is of closed type. As I said, what is closed type of circulatory system? Where from the heart, if there are a lot of tubes or the uh, veins, arteries, etc. It is a bit complicated type that is seen in Anilida as well. See, here's the mouth, there's the heart, okay, and they have the vessels, blood vessels, which carry the blood to a different kind of the organs, the digestive tract, and everything. There are blood vessels, it is not open, it is closed. Okay, this is the excretory organ, this is the anus, okay, mostly bisexual, but maybe you may be unisexual. Now, like they can have, can have both the reproductory parts in one body or they might be unisexual, like they can have the female part in one body and the male part in one body. It depends upon the different species, okay. The species, what are the different animals, okay. There is Neresis, there is earthworm, there is leech, okay. These are all kinds of Anilida. Now, Arthropoda. Why is Arthropoda so important? Because most of the animals... Okay, whatever animals we saw, most of the animals comes under arthropoda. Flies, uh, then 
different kind of uh, insects, butterflies, cockroach, beetles, lice, everything is orthopoda. Whatever you see in your house, okay, some insects or something you don't know, that will always be orthopoda. Okay, so orthopoda are mostly solitary or they might be colonial. Every, everybody is mostly are there free living. Some might be parasitic like lice and all, they are all parasitic in nature, but mostly they are all free living. They are omnipresent, they are present everywhere. Okay, everywhere they are present. As I said, you look around your house, you'll see all arthropoda, all insects, everything is arthropoda. Okay, now body is covered by the tough chitinous cuticle. Okay, there is some chitinous cuticle. Have you seen a cockroach? Everybody has seen a cockroach. Now in the cockroach, you can see some brown color on the body. It, is, it can be a waxy kind of, it will be shining. The brown color outer covering will be shining. That is the chitin. Okay, it has a, that is strong in nature. Okay, even if you want to hit it, it won't get hit because it has the chitin cover which is very strong and which protects the cockroach, okay. And arthropods undergo molting to allow growth. They'll be molting and there is metamorphosis also. They'll be growing from one form to the another one, from one form to the another, okay. That is seen as arthropods. The body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen, okay. Head, thorax, abdomen. In some animals, there is head and thorax, which form the cephalothorax. Head and thorax, they come together to form the cephalothorax. Process legs for crawling, creeping, walking, wings for flying. Everything is seen in arthropods. Okay, these are the first animals to have legs. Okay. These are the first animals to have legs. Okay. So their digestive system is complete and divided into foregut, midgut, and hindgut. Okay, mouth parts are highly evolved, used for biting, chewing, and sucking. Okay, everything is evolved. These are all higher level. Okay. Circulatory system is of open type. This is a lower level category. Okay. Open type does not have vessels okay respiratory organs are gills trachea book lungs book gills etc okay and excretion takes place by something called green glands or malpigeon tubules this is an important question for neat i have seen this coming okay the respiratory organs are gills trachea etc excretion takes place in green glands or malpigeon tubules Okay, the nervous system is formed by nerve ring and double ganglionated nerve cord. Sense organs are all well developed. Okay, sexes are separate in sexual dimorphism as in they are unisex in nature. There is a proper female and a proper male. Okay, development is direct or indirect. This, this is called as, this cycle is called as metamorphosis where there are eggs from eggs you can see larva okay that is a different kind of a structure then there you can see pupa that is a different kind of a structure then you see a proper butterfly the most developed structure so this whole these are all butterflies only part of butterflies only but this whole cycle okay is known as the metamorphosis this is an indirect growth. But for animals such as cockroaches and other insects, the growth is direct. It will grow from small to big. Okay. And then some arthropods have metamorphosis. Okay. So this is how it looks, sorry, this is how it looks, okay, there's the abdomen, okay, this is the thorax and this is the head, head, 
thorax and abdomen. Okay, this is the ovary. This is a female bee. Okay, there are there's a heart. There are two hearts actually. There's a dorsal blood vessel. Okay, everything. It's all. This is a developed animal. Okay, apart from the open circulatory system, it is quite developed. Okay, the last one today is mollusca. Okay, this phylum includes soft body animals, the snails and everything comes in the mollusca. Okay, they are free living or sedentary. They stand in one place or they are free living. They are mostly marine and some are marshy. Okay, they can be terrestrial or aquatic. There's a tube within tube which is seen. You can see it in Astromenthes also. Tube within tube. But some are, some are bilateral symmetrical. Most are, most of the, this thing, animals are asymmetrical in nature. Okay. And body is divided into head, foot and visceral mass. Okay. Visceral mass is enclosed in a thick muscular fold of body called the mantle. Okay. This, this creature you see, this is a snail. There is a body. Okay, there is a foot and this is a visceral mass. Okay, visceral mass which gives rise to the shell. Because of the visceral mass, it goes in, it covers itself with the help of shell. Okay, that shell is very hard and it protects the whole body. Okay, so this is how the body looks. Okay, there's a mouth and nerve and everything. There is, this is the visceral mass, and from where the covering comes, this mantle comes. It's all developed. The there is anus and there is stomach, digestive gland, intestine, gonads. Everything is there. So the mollusks they generally feed on plant and animal matter. Locomotion is by arms or foot, this, this kind of foot, this is the foot, okay. Digestive system is well developed, okay, system is, intestine is U-shaped because of torsion of gastropods. Buccal cavity has a tongue-like organ which helps them to chew and everything and they show all developed organs, there is lung, Antennidia, but the circulatory system is of open type. Heart just pumps out the blood over the body. Okay. And this is one of the most important things. Excretion occurs by kidneys, also called as organ of Bojanus. This is important for meat. Okay. Excretion occurs by kidneys, see, also called as organs of Bojanus. Nervous system is formed by three pairs of ganglia, okay, cerebral ganglia in head, pedal ganglia in foot and visceral ganglia in the visceral mass. Three different kinds of nervous system in the three different parts of body. They have eyes, tentacles, ostradia, sexes are separate, oviparous, yeah. they are unisexual in nature. Okay, development is direct or direct, mostly it is direct on the examples such as chitin, octopus, sepia and pilla. Okay, so these are the lower organisms. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the section, okay, or we'll move to the quiz. Okay, very few questions today because we'll have more questions when we go more into the uh higher organisms that time we'll have more questions okay so the sponges exhibit a cellular level of organization b multicellular level of organization c a cellular level of organization and d none if anybody can answer they can answer in the chat box or i'll give you the answer if anybody is answering if anybody is interested Okay, so the answer is 
A. Cellular level of organization. Okay. So, because sponges are basically underdeveloped animals, they don't have special tissues or organs. Okay, that is why cellular level of organization. Next, the organ level organization is first seen in concentrates, platyhelminthes, nemathelminthes, arthropods. Anybody? I just said like that is the first true animal where you can see organ level of organization. Okay, the answer is platyhelminthes. Okay, they have true body with organs. Basically, anything from platyhelminthes to above and above platyhelminthes and above animals. have the organ level organization in the body okay bioluminescence is prominent in the phylum anybody anybody is there okay so the bioluminescence is prominent in the phylum tenophora okay so they show Bioluminescence along with some other plankton, some other plankton also. So, bioluminescence. Okay. The last question largest phylum of animalia which covers two thirds of all species on the earth is. I just said it just now. Platyhelminthes, nemathelminthes, arthropods, and chordates. Anybody, they have the largest phylum. Anything, it is omnipresent. It's present everywhere. Anyone? Okay. So, the answer is arthropods. Okay, we have the other largest group of animals. Okay, so thank you everyone for coming to the class and watching this video. Do follow us, do like our videos, do like, share and subscribe our videos and in the next class, which will be on the uh, today's Wednesday, third Friday, okay, Friday, seven o'clock. Do join us for the next class, and we'll be discussing about the higher kind of animals. Okay, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye bye.